All right, here we are, Saturday, August 29th, Jug End. For some of you, oh, well, you actually didn't see because one of my early Ricky mistakes, and I'll make more this weekend, was up there on Jug End where uh, Frank and I left parts of our backsides coming down in the rain. Um, that was the uh, Sage's Ravine to Jug End video. And so we're back at Jug End. We've got the boys' gadget, mile back, Daywalker, and Rafa. Hey, Rafa. There you go. Nice. Uh, about a 22, 23 mile overnighter from Jug End to, I think it's Fernwood Road, hopefully. Um, not sure how we'll split it up, but uh, there's the trail. It's about, uh, what time is it about? 8.54. We had a few mishaps as usual getting to the trail, but uh, we're ready to go. And uh, we'll check in. So coming through the trail just after we started. This was probably all meadow and farmland at one point. You can see the, the walls that served back then as property lines and ways to divide up the, the, tra uh, the fields. So this is something we don't get to do as much, is hike through some of these fields and meadows. Not sure how much of this hike will be like this, but this is pretty cool. So coming through the woods is a cool little thing. A little bridge. I don't know which one's the one to climb. I'm going with the one made out of steel. <coughs> So, a couple miles in, a little trail magic. Got a, uh, some spring water bottles. Frank, what's inside? Awesome. Uh, Just more water. Spring water. Which is cool. Hopefully that's not a sign that there's no water on the trail. Because, it's dry. Uh, it hasn't rained in a while out here, I don't think. But pretty cool. A little trail we magic. Just popped out a couple of miles from Jug End Road. Um, this is the message center for South Egremont Road, and um, so this is uh, this is the message center, and there's a, a small parking lot here. So, like we try to do a lot, if you're trying to do parking lot to parking lot, um, this is what the parking looks like on South Egremont Road, and uh, this is where. You are. So I think we're up mass. Yep. That's pretty cool. I wonder what that is there. That's possibly Everett. Because I think that's the highest peak in the area, don't you think? Yeah. Everett down in the jug end. So that's probably race. And then up along that ridge walk we did. Up Everett down. And then at some point we came down Jug End. I keep filming these areas just because it's different for us. We haven't hiked much of this kind of stuff. Everything's usually rocks and roots and mud and the big green tunnels. So this is this is different to be walking across pastures and farm fields of crops so, and things uh, like that. It's, we're a little over two miles in. Uh, it's me and this guy's in front of me. Uh, we can hear uh, Gray Beard and Malbec. They're behind us. Great thing about this group is uh, we hike as a group, we start as a group, and then and there's Rafa. And then throughout the uh, throughout the hike, we'll separate, and it's almost like you're hiking alone for a little bit. And then you know somebody will stop, take a leak or something, and you catch right back up. So, I mean, you know, so. Uh, we group hike, but we really don't stick together as a group too much, you know. Uh, you just kind of hike at your own pace. Uh, like I said, we're a little over two miles into the hike. It's been fairly easy, you know. You can see the trail. Uh, the trail is pretty well matted down. I mean, all the through hikers, actually all the northbound through hikers have already 
went by and they're probably like maybe a couple weeks away from Katahdin right now. More farmland, a little farm pond. This is cool, we're on the back side of the building. Cool, cupolas up there. Pretty nice. Housatonic River here. Nice meadow, lots of corn. Uh, this is peak time out here for the corn. Running the grocery store, you get this stuff for 10 cents an ear at this point, maybe even cheaper. But uh, pretty, pretty area. Housatonic is crystal clear, pretty low. Uh, we're about five plus miles in and almost no water on the trail. Down in the river, I guess, if you wanted to plow down, it's kind of steep to get down there. But uh, So if you're in this stretch out in the Berkshires and you're doing some sections this late in the year, this is towards the end of August, almost the very end of August, have to be a little bit careful about the water because there is not much so far. So this is kind of sad to see. The Housatonic, which I said was crystal clear, um, obviously is not safe. So PCBs, it says do not eat fish, frogs, or turtles from the river. Everything is a uh, catch and release in this section. That's kind of sad. There were a lot of mills out this way, so I don't know if that's where these rivers got contaminated. All right, so we just came out of there, and this is Holmes Road. So, again, if you're looking for a parking area, it looks like there's space for five or six cars here. Um, looks like a pretty safe, there's some, some houses right here, so it looks like a pretty safe place to leave, leave the car. We just had, uh, after five or six miles of some easy field walking, we just had, a, I don't know, a mile or so of uh, some pretty decent climbs and I think we're about to get into some more before we get to the um, to the next shelter. Is that the K Wood shelter, the next one? K Wood? Daywalker's going to check his trusty AWOL map. Oh yeah, oh, Tom Leonard shelter. Tom Leonard. Tom Leonard shelter is the next shelter. We're, I think we have about four miles or so, give or take, to get to that one. So this is lunch. the top of East Mountain. Beautiful view. I don't know what peak we're seeing way off in the distance, but I'm guessing from here something in, in Vermont, but who knows. But uh, first real view we've had today and uh, it's been a pretty steady climb for a while now. But nothing really to see until we popped out here on this rock face. But this is really, really nice. You can see a lot of the farms off in the distance. So this is nice. Um, so I think we're about two miles um, from Tom Leonard Shelter. We'll have lunch there. and and plot out the rest of the afternoon. Some pretty good climbs huh? out of that last... Uh... Oh, yeah. Nothing horrendous, but just steady, steady, steady. All right, everyone, welcome to the Tom Leonard Shelter. This is a uh, typical Appalachian Trail shelter. We have some bunk space down below. Get some bunk space up, up high. I don't know if you can see this, all these markings here on the edge. You'll see this in a lot of the shelters up here in New England. And basically what that's from is from hikers sitting on the edge of this and getting salt onto the wood. And then you have porcupines that happen to like the salt and come up and gnaw on it. So that's what all those little teeth markings are that you're seeing around. Yeah, the, uh, the log book. We'll go ahead if there's a pen. Oh, there's one. Go ahead and scope a couple of the journal entries before, uh, before going ahead and making ours. 
Let's see here, a little engine had to walk way down for water, but there was a cool breeze at the bottom. Hooray! P.S. Shelter sign requested to go with those faint blue blazes, please. A wise man does in the beginning what a foolish man does in the end. And we're not. So... Nice little, uh, nice little sight here. I think we're gonna, according to that girl, she had to take a long walk down to find the water. So, uh, I guess we're gonna be searching for the water today here. So, it's been a while since I filmed for a few reasons. Number one, the terrain's been pretty tough in some places. And uh, secondly, we, run into a situation with water on the trail there's been no water on the trail and we are pretty low we're probably three quarters of a mile from a retreat center I can't think of the exact name of it but it's a retreat center that we're hoping has a spigot that we can use because otherwise we're going to have to hitch into town somewhere to get water um, so as we've said before we're learning. I think today's lesson is late August on the Appalachian Trail in the Berkshires. There is no water. And the AWOL book has water every two to four miles, four at the worst. And uh, we have not seen a drop of water in 12 plus miles now. So we've hiked pretty much straight through. We went by Tom Leonard Shelter. Um, Gadget was ahead of us and he went down to the shelter to look for water. There was none and uh, he was able to get some footage of the shelter so that we'll be able to show you what that shelter looks like. But um, so you live and you learn when you're on this trail and sometimes it's a painful lesson. Um, so we're about to do 13 miles basically without a break and with not enough water. So we'll check in. Hopefully after we get water. We thought we were going to have to cancel the rest of the hike. There's absolutely no water sources for the first 13 miles of this hike. But a very nice woman by the name of Diane gave us some fresh spring water. So we are now going to try to trek two and a half more miles to Benedict Pond with this viable water source and a campsite. So we're going to camp there. See when we get to well, Benedict Pond. We're at Beartown State Forest. Ranger Rick ain't here, and we can't figure out if we're going to get a campsite or not. So, it looks like a night of stealth camping for us. We're going to have to get back on the trail and try to find somewhere to go. We're actually going to go walk towards uh, one of the shelters. It's about, uh, I don't know, a little over a mile and a half. Because now we got to walk another half mile out of here. So, it's 1.7 miles to the shelter. At that pace, we'll probably get there around 8 o'clock tonight. So uh, we're going to head there, and if we find a nice place on the trail to set up, we'll stealth camp. So, life on the AT. So, try to get a little in before the dark darkness falls. It's about 7 o'clock. Went crazy to get to Beartown State Forest, the state park here in Massachusetts. Only to find that it was full. And there's no ranger to be found, so thank you, Commonwealth. So we're going back down the blue trail, back to the AT, and hoping to quickly find some place to set up a, a stealth camp because <clears throat> we've been going hard for a long time. We're, uh, we're about 16 miles didn't stop for lunch because we had no water really so we plowed through and uh, hopefully within the next mile or so we can find a stealth camp we'll load it down with water the one thing we did get at the at the state park was a full load of water so I've got three plus liters right now so 
the good news is I have three plus liters. The bad news is after 16 miles and being up at three o'clock in the morning, I'm carrying three plus liters. But that's okay. That's, uh, that's what we signed up for, right? Part of the adventure. Hopefully very close to the, the shelter, but again, the trail does this to you. We're pretty low, I have to be honest. Everyone's really tired, really done with the day, but then you pop out. It's, uh, I don't know, probably going on 7.30, and uh, you come out on this. This is uh, just just unbelievable to, uh, to see. So I don't think I'm going to make that crazy statement that it was worth it. Uh, because I'm going to tell you, we've had a little bit of a, a trial today, but uh, it certainly helps. That's that's nice stuff. So, I don't even know what shelter this is. Something um, Wilcox, South Wilcox Shelter. Um, 9.27 in the evening was set up, but I'm not sure if how well this camera does in, in the dark. Uh, but Gadget's here, and... Uh, mile back and of course Rafa is here and uh, we did almost 20 miles today and we'll be doing some kind of wrap up on this on uh, on one of those don't try this at home things because we did the last few miles in the camp with the headlamps on um, Frank's turned in for the night he's he's the smart one but uh, we're just we're just doing some cooking uh, the, Mountain House Meals. I've got the beef stroganoff. Uh, Ryan's got, I think, the Hiker Pantry. Fettuccine Alfredo. Alfredo. And Doug did the lasagna. Um, <clears throat> or I should say, Mile Back and Gadget. Uh, so my guess is we're going to fire these down and uh, get to bed pretty early. So day two. Boys slept in a little bit. About 7.15 as Gadget emerges from the cocoon. <clears throat> hey, hey, put that down. Not a lot of movement out of mile back. We got into this south Wilcox shelter pretty late last night had to set up and eat in the dark but uh, not too bad and turned in pretty quick all right so we get some some breakfast going Frank Frank turned in early, and uh, he missed the last call for dinner, so I think he looks like he's making three meals today, maybe? Yeah, three meals, yeah. So, uh, what do you have here? Uh, one's uh, scrambled eggs and bacon, and some uh, sweet and sour pork, rice, and uh, biscuits and gravy. Nice, so this is like you're on a cruise ship, kind of, and it's the buffet in the morning? A little bit, morning buffet. So this is mile back set up. You're cooking now or you're done? I'm done. He's done with uh, scrambled eggs are in the pouch, ready to go. A little coffee. And uh, a little coffee already. Gadget's got, uh, got the pot going for some... Double down on the uh, breakfast skillet. Breakfast skillet, which is... Uh, magic sauce out there for it. Nice, nice. Some dill pickle... Uh, sunflower seeds to wash it all down and I've got going we all have extra meals because we didn't stop for lunch yesterday and I'm gonna go with the scrambled eggs and bacon which is uh, the water's going and Rafa had um, dog food her usual she had a double dose last night a single today she might have an extra meal today though so we'll give you, um, there's some people over in the shelter, I think, which is over that way. I think they're still in there. They may still be sleeping. So hopefully before we leave, we'll get a chance to do a tour. Of we the had about shelter. a, I don't know, we figure an 18-mile hike last night. Um, 
a model of it was in a complete dark. Excuse me, was in about complete darkness. I'm not gonna lie, kicked my ass. Um, you know, we didn't eat all day. Pretty much had trail mix, and my trail mix only lasted for a little bit of my system before uh, I lost it. Uh, but uh, we're gonna get a. Uh, Get some food in our systems and uh, head back on the trail. We got about a nice, easy five. Hey, everyone, left. Gadget here again with you. Uh, we're still out on the Appalachian Trail out here at Wilcox Mountain. This is the Wilcox Mountain Shelter. This is known as the Old Shelter. Um, as you can see, it's a little smaller, a little simpler. Um, one level. Nothing fancy. Hope you can see everything here. Um, as the logbook holder indicates, newer shelter past the privy. So we will uh, go ahead and take you on that journey. I believe the privy is this way. I could be way off. Can't smell it yet. That's normally the, uh, the number one indication. Oh, I see the privy and I do see the shelter there in the background. I don't know if you can make out the little brown shack here on the left, as well as the bright red roof of the new shelter down there. So when we came in last night, around 9 o'clock, when it was pitch black, we couldn't see any of this, so there is a privy for those of you I've never seen one. It's basically a hole in the ground underneath a plywood hole. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, the simplest, uh, simplest uses of an outhouse. So look at the new shelter. This one, this one appears to be a multi-level, just like most of the other uh, ones that we've seen with sleeping down below and up above. But let's, uh, let's double check on that. Oh, and there's Mile back already down here. Someone else apparently uh, thought about taking corn, but uh, thought corn it was too, too heavy. Mile back over here. Uh, let's see. Oh man, I hope that's not human. Hope that's some animal that came in here. But uh, I signed the book. As you can see, we have the uh, we have the loft up there. We had some. Uh, Two ladders to access it. Another mouse can for those of you not familiar with them. Get the log book. We'll go ahead and uh, sign it up for Wilcox South. Well, we're all packed up, getting ready to go. Uh, I'm not going to show you around the, uh, the, the site because if you check out our page, um, you know, Greybeard's showing you the the, the uh, camp that we're at. Uh, gadget she's gonna show you the camp that we're at so uh, all I'm gonna tell you is that uh, you know we're getting ready for five miles uh, we're about to get out of here at Wilcox South uh, shelter um, we got a little bit of a uphill battle we got to take care of but it's right at the beginning which isn't too bad oh, that's nice. and uh, you know so it should be uh, should be a nice easy five mile hike I mean these are easy for us these five milers I'm wearing gym shorts. Gym shorts. Notice I didn't say anything else. Um, one of the reasons why we do this is because we're basic hikers too. We're just beginner hikers. And uh, I don't know if you get the fact that I'm just wearing gym shorts. Uh, it's because uh, some of the undergarments that I we brought, you know. Um, one thing about being a hiker is um, you want to make sure you have the proper undergarment. And... Uh, that you, uh, you know, uh, maybe compression shorts or some kind of synthetic um, undergarment. Uh, you definitely don't want to wear cotton out here. Um, definitely want to wear some kind of wool sock. Um, Gadget was lucky, was nice enough to uh, give me a pair of wool socks. Um, so, you know, we're all beginners out here too. So that's the reason why we do this is so people aren't afraid to go out and do these backpacking excursions because... Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, although uh, sometimes it's tough, it's, it's really rewarding.
Look at the trail just north of um, the South Wilcox shelter. Immediately out of the shelter, there's a, a little climb. It's kind of steep, but it's, it's pretty short. And then it seems to level off. I'm not exactly sure where we are, but if you look at the AWOL book, most of this trip we have back to the, to the car is downhill. In fact, it looks like the very end is quite a descent, which can, can be slow. And uh, does a little number on your knees. Cardio-wise, it's not so bad. It's not like the climbs, but sometimes the knees take a pounding. But you can see here, pretty easy going. It's, uh, it's humid today. Not much sun, and it's thick in here. So even if there's sun, not much of it penetrates. We're about a mile out of South Wilcox. We're about halfway between the south and the north Wilcox shelters. It's kind of odd too, they put them so close together. Especially since there's basically two shelters at the south. But um, this is this is it. There's a little sec, we, we just crossed the stream and then there's another one here. It's, it's a pretty good water source right here. You can see Frank with the Soya Mini. Um, we were all in decent shape, but there's no reason to pass this up even though we only have about Four and a half miles or so to go, but we learned yesterday never say you never say never. Um, so um, we're just going to filter up a little bit of water here. It's nice and clean and cold. Nice pond here. Beavers have done a number in there. The beaver dams all over the place. But after the creek we filled up on, there's another one that comes out of here. Wasn't as 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 clear water, but it, it was running pretty well. So, there's a good amount of water in this, just this little section at least, still this time of year, but this is a pretty sight here. Yeah? We're at the, the blue trail down to the uh, Wilcox North Shelter, and we have a sign here, Aggressive Bear, Bear was here on July 14th, so a little over a month ago, um, just giving you a heads up to hang your food. I'm not sure if there's a box down here, but we'll head down and take a quick look at the show. Alright everyone, Gadget back here from Just Go Backpacking. Still out on the AT. Right now we are blue blazing as you can see to go and show you guys North Wilcox Shelter real quick. Uh, North Wilcox Shelter is 0.3 miles off of the AT. Um, we're gonna go shoot some quick footage to uh, give you guys an idea of what it uh, what it looks like and what the resources are. As you are. can see, this trail is predominantly downhill, so be prepared to do some hike and back uphill, you know, almost a third of a mile to get back to the trail. All right, as we come around the corner here, you can see coming up on the bear box right here. Very, uh, very nice option. Uh, as you'll see from uh, the photo, uh, there was an aggressive bear here back on July so it's very helpful to be able to not have to hang your hang your bags up in trees now this appears to be one of the older style shelters just like the one however it seems to be a lot deeper and could probably hold a lot more space a lot more a uh, lot more hikers fire pit Picnic table, of course, Rafa. Um, I would believe that at one point of the year, this might be considered the water source. Um, it being August 30th, as you see, it is it is trickling, but it's not a. Hmm. I suppose it's usable. I believe there's a privy here as well, but I did not see its location marked out anywhere. Oh, now, so found the privy. There's the, uh, the shelter. Get this uh, hand-painted sign. It's a little hard to see, brown on wood, but it does the trick. Oh, there it is. I can see it off in the distance. These right here, probably some tent sites. Nice flat areas. 
And like I said there, there's a couple uh, a couple little trail spider webbing off, so there might be a couple more tent spots here. And you can see ye old privy off in the distance. So we just passed the, um, I think it's, is it Bear Mountain Road or something like that? Yeah. And there's a couple of water sources just after that. So uh, the water is definitely picked up. Uh, this is a pretty good running stream here. So, woo, I almost took a bath. Um, but definitely more water on this side. Unfortunately, it was like three quarters of the way through our hike. Before we started finding We got about water. another mile to go, about maybe back to the car, and uh, not back to the but to the car, and uh, we're on a descent. Um, we have no more climbs. Everything's downhill from here. But I just wanted to show you, right quick. I'm a little slower than the rest of the guys, so they're ahead. But this is uh, this is the blaze, and this is some of the trail this way, and uh, I'm a little slower because. I want to make sure my footing is uh, good and uh, I'm going to try to walk a little bit while I'm filming. It's hard. Uh, I don't know if you can see the terrain here, but the terrain is a lot of roots, a lot of rocks. Um, you know, uh, hiking in the AT and Mass the Massachusetts section anyway, um, it's a lot of in the woods. They call it the Green Tunnel type of hiking. Um, you're in the woods a lot. Uh, it's not. There's only a few, you know, a few times that you come out, you know, the woods. Uh, we showed you at the beginning of this hike uh, that uh, you know we were out of the woods. Did some. That was the first time we saw fields, by the way. This whole time we hiked uh, the AT here in Massachusetts. But uh, as you can see, it's a steady uh, descent. And uh, that's uh, where we're at now, and about another mile or so, uh, we'll be at Gadget's car, and then uh, they'll drive me and uh, Greybeard to his Jeep, and we'll be on our way, and we'll be eating some subs and drinking some beer. All right, so we're wrapping it up. Ryan was kind enough to finish ahead of us and actually bring the, the car right to the trailhead, but uh, that is it for this stretch from... Jagan to Jerusalem Road, also Fernside Road on some maps. I think we've we've done 26, 27 miles in a day and a half or so. Um, not all of those were trail miles, so I'll put the actual trail miles in the um, in the comment section. But uh, we think we're about 27 total miles. It's um, two o'clock on Sunday. We really hung around camp quite a bit today. It was we needed to to recharge after yesterday, but the overall successful hike and uh, nobody got hurt. We had a good time. A lot of lessons learned. As every time we go out, seems to be some lessons learned. So whatever we've learned, we'll try to pass on. But I uh, hope you enjoy this, and if you do. Hopefully it will inspire you to get out there and just go backpacking.